Hey everybody, John Jackson here, also known as Attorney Sam, and shortly we'll be doing a virtual tasting with this great Tardieu Laurent CDP. I'm just going to be joined by Bastion Tardieu from Tardieu Laurent in a moment. I've got Bastion Tardieu from Tardieu Laurent in the Rhone Valley, and we're going to have a great tasting for you with four different wines, including an old vine, Chateauneuf du Pop. But before we get started with that, I will turn things over to uh, Bastion so he could provide a brief introduction for Tardieu Laurent. So, uh, first of all, uh, Tardieu Laurent, it's, uh, it's, it's a great story. It's a meeting between two great wine lovers, Dominique Laurent, which is a, a great negotiant and uh, owner in Burgundy, and uh, Michel Tardieu, my father, huge wine lover also. And Tardieu Laurent is a, it's a micro negos. It's a handcraft and micro negos. What does it mean? It means that we are not running a vineyard. We are selecting grape and juice for different vineyards in Rhone Valley. But when my father created the negos, early 90, uh, he decided to focus only on the quality. What does it mean? It means that the wine that we are producing and the wine that we're going to test uh, today come from only all vines and all vines located on the best terroir of each appellation. I want to say this is the DNA of Tardieu Laurent and the approach and the philosophy is completely, I want to say completely inspired and influenced by the Burgundy philosophy. You know, it's, we are not, uh, we, we have, our production is very, is very small. We are, we have more the image of producer than just a negotiant. So because each production for each cuvee is very tiny. So it's always, I'm always very proud to say that when my father created the negos, he was the first negotiant in Rhone Valley to have this approach in terms of, 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 uh, of negotiants, of micro negos. He was the first to age the wine in, in barrels very early. He was the first to have an interest about the winemaking, but also about the viticulture, the culture of the vines. You, you have to know before each uh, harvest, we, vi we are visiting each producer. We test each berries before the picking. During the winemaking, we are, uh, we, are, we are involved for the process. So to be honest, we, we, we were the first to do that in, in Rhone Valley, definitely. Yeah, and that was pretty early on to be doing that in the, in the 1990s, for sure. Yeah, it was, it, 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 it was not very common. You know, to have this approach, it, it, it was definitely uh, it, it was very it's very Burgundy approach. You know, and uh, yes, it's uh, it, uh, as I was saying, my, my father was was definitely a pioneer in Rhone Valley uh, to uh, to do that. So so and when I say we are inspired with with the Burgundy philosophy, it's also for the aging because once we have select the wines, you know from the producer, we bring our barrels and the producer rack the wines in our barrels. Okay. The wines we select in our barrels. So, so it means that at this stage, all the wines from the vintage 2020 are in our barrels. So, and we age, and we age on, on uh, the wines uh, on, uh, on the Burgundy philosophy. What does it mean? It means that we age the wine on the fine leaves. On a, on, a, on a reductive way, you know, we, the first year, we keep each terroir, each grape variety, each, each producer separately. And after one year, because we, 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 we are thinking that to get the best expression of each, each terroir, you need time. So, so we, we need at least one year. And after one year, we are doing the blend and we rack back the wines blended for one more year of aging. So it's, it's, um, it's a quite a long aging, you know, but alway, always on the fine list, always. Yeah. Because we, we are thinking that the genesis of the terroir is on the fine list. And so those are the, the dead yeast cells that are in the barrel? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. There is always four or five liters of fine list at the bottom of each barrel. Yeah. And do you use any batonnage where you stir those up or no? No, uh, not for the white and not for the red. For the white, 
we are selecting the grape. We are, well, sorry, we are selecting the juice just right after the press. And once we select the juice, we bring whole barrels and we start the fermenting in our barrels. So okay, and we keep and we keep the wine on the fine list of the fermenting for the for the aging. But no no batonnage during okay. uh, during the during the, the aging for the okay, white great. and for the red. And then what size barrels do you use? And are you using a uh, new oak or or neutral uh, oak? So we, we, we use we use um, we use uh, burgundy barrels, so twenty um, two hundred twenty eight liters for the first year of the aging. And for the second year, when the wines is when the wines are branding, we we are using a food wooden tank, big wooden tank, for the second year. So we are using New York for for the the wines from the the North Rhone Valley. So the part it depends on the vintage. In fact, there is no recipe for for the part the, the part of New York on on each uh, each cuvee. So, but we are only using New York for the North. And after two use, we are keeping the barrels for the south, and we are using okay. them for the Grenache and and the Mourvedre. Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, so we um, there is a yes, it depends on the vintage. Uh, sometimes, uh, for, for for example, sometimes for the Saint Joseph, it's um, it's twenty uh, percent of New York. Sometimes it's twenty five. Sometimes it's uh, fifteen. Sometimes it's thirty. It depends of um, there is no rules. Every year is different. And I noticed that you don't do any fining or filtration either. Is that right? Yes, that's right. We we you know, as I was saying, you know, uh, we we try to be the most natural as possible during the engine. We 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 avoid to 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 use a lot of racking, you know, and uh, before the boat, and we are not using the fining. And not the filtration also, because you know when you are when you are when you are doing a long aging, it's like a natural stabilization. So, if after two years of aging, the wine is quite clear, and we are thinking that it's not uh, an obligation to to make a, a filtration. So yes, we we try to be uh, yes, as I was saying, the most natural as possible, just to keep uh, as as possible all the flavor and. The 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 the, uh, the purity of the fruit, you know, in each yeah. cuvee. And you've been the the head winemaker at Tardieu Laurent. Yes, I'm 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 uh, I'm in charge of the 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 winemaking and the selection. Of course, with my father. <laughs> my father is still yeah. is still involved in the in the business. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yes, we are working together. So I joined my father. For the vintage 2010, it was my first vintage, so not not too bad to start <laughs> in a run Valley. Yeah, definitely so a good a vintage. Great, it's a great vintage, <laughs> 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 definitely yeah. a great vintage. So yes, it was. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was easier for me. <laughs> yeah, so you can take credit for that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely. So uh, yes, I start. Uh, I start with him, and uh, yes, it's. Uh, there is one, one interesting point, you know, about about the our job. You know, is the the sourcing. So it means that to find new producer every year to just to improve the QB every year. You know, it's very important. And there is also one one important uh, side in in our job that is that there is no contract with the producer. Everything is best on a trust, and all the contracts finish with hand checking it's a uh, definitely old fashioned uh, way to to work but i think that it's one of the reason why the producer uh, like to work with us you know because this is the this approach very uh, not modern very very old fashioned is a part of what we we have a very strong uh, relationship with 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 the the producer so you both trust each other and you don't feel the need for that contract of of course of course and mm -hmm. we are working there, there are some producers we are working with them since the beginning of 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 the creation of Tardieu Laurent you know there are there are probably 10, 12 producers since the beginning, but the average is around, I would say, 15 years old. So there is a base of, of, uh, of, of, of the same producer uh, every year since uh, at least 15 years. So it's, it's really important to, to build the, the relationship.
and to have the, a strong relationship with the, with the producer. And so part of your job then is to go out and find new new producers then. To yes, also, from. and it's um, it's for me it's one of the most interesting part of the of the of the to be negotiants is to find you know the new producer, you know to for example you know there is uh, some. Um, uh, some new producer they used to bring the, the the grape to the cat cooperative and they start to build their own cellar and uh, it's 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 interesting to find them you know to and to start the, the relationship and to build the, the partnership with them so it's uh, it's uh, it's very interesting and do you have to go out and find them or do some of them apply to you and reach out to you or a little bit of both both yeah, sometimes our, the best way to find a new producer is to ask to the producer, you know, uh, w we work with them, which producers they like to test and they like to drink the wine. And sometimes they, they are saying, yes, for, um, there is a new producer, they start to, to build the, the, the cellar just a few months ago, and uh, they have a very hard beat vines uh, located on this terroir. It's quite interesting because um, uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's an organic culture, et cetera, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. So it's the best, the best way to find new producer. How do you decide then how to blend those wines? Do you, do you age them each separately from each producer? And then at yes. some point, do you have a, a blending process? Yeah, so there is no blending process. The first, uh, in fact, there is one rule. We take, we are taking all the terroir all the producer, all the grape variety from the same appellation. We are testing, it's a blind testing, and we are descending this one with this one, this one with this one, this one with this one. And when we are doing the blend, if there is a, I don't know, if there is a Vraqueras uh, left, we declasse the wine to make a Côte du Rhône. I see, okay. Voilà. Because it's, it's a permitting in a Rhône Valley to use Cru to make a Côte du Rhône. Except for Chateau Neuf du Pape, it's not permitted. It's automatically Vin de, Vin de France. But for the other other crew, you can do that. So we have a we have a premium Côte du Rhône called uh, Guilloui, and we are using uh, what we are not using for the crew blend, and we are using to make a Côte du Rhône. How many producers do you have total that you work with? Oh, it's a good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Uh, one day I have to count because every every uh, each um, every times uh, I have I, I have this question. And so I have, one day I have to count, but I would say almost hundred hundred producer, hundred different producer. So we are we are covering all the Rhone Valley. You know, uh, we are um, we are producing some Cotroti, some Condrieu, Hermitage, Saint Joseph. Cornas, uh, Croz Hermitage, Saint Pere, and in the south we are producing uh, uh, um, Chateau Neuf, Gigondas, uh, uh, Vaquiras, and uh, and Resto. Uh, almost, almost all the crew uh, okay. from the Rhone Valley. In each cuvee, there is uh, the average there is five or six different producers for the blend. So okay. Yes, um, yeah. It's quite, quite a, a few lot, then. Uh, different producer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, interesting because every 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 process of winemaking is different because we we for some producer we are involved in uh, for the winemaking. So um, every year is different. Every producer is different. Every terroir is different. It's not the same winemaking for uh, every wine. So. Uh, and we try to find uh, the good, but not the good recipe, but the good balance for the wine mix. And you raised a good point about all the different regions, both in the north and the south, the different appellations. Uh, perhaps uh, for those who are just new to the Rhone Valley, maybe you could talk a little bit about the difference between the north and the south, because there are many differences and they're also separated by about 30 miles. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, maybe you could start by talking about the, the northern Rhone region. In, yeah, it, it's, I don't Yes, uh, it's it's um, is is the Rhone Valley, but in fact, it's two different two different areas for many many reasons. First, first at all, first it's not not the same climate. So you have at least between five and ten degrees Celsius of uh, of uh, of difference between south and north. It's not the same grape in the north. It's for the red, it's most it's only Syrah. For the south, it's mostly Grenache. So two different 
in terms in terms of flavor and style is two different grapes. Then it's not the same it's not the same soil. In the north it's mostly granite soil and in the south it's more galley roulé and, and clay. So in general it's a Rhone Valley but it's two different two different area. Two different area. Yeah. And I, I want to say north in terms of um, in terms of not of style, but in terms of balance, it's very close to the Burgundy to the Burgundy uh, approach. I, I, I like to say there is a kind of connection between Burgundy and North Rhone Valley because it's just one grape. It's a very small uh, appellation. Inside each appellation, you have a, a microclimate, a little bit like uh, like like in Burgundy. In terms of balance, it's very similar. It's uh, it's not just, it's um, quite a low alcohol level. You have more acidity uh, than than the south. So it's of course it's not the same flavor, but for the approach, it's quite quite similar. And we and we can see because definitely the Burgundy wine lovers have a preference for the for the Rhone Valley. And especially for the north, yep. especially Cote Roti, way up there. At especially the top, Cote Roti, and... of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially Cote Roti. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's it's probably the most Burgundy wine in in the Rhone Valley. Yes, definitely. Yes. Yes, I agree for sure. And then within the Northern Rhone, you mentioned a number of different appellations as well. And one we're going to be tasting is uh, Saint Joseph. Maybe you yeah. could talk a little bit about uh, Saint Joseph. Yeah. So Saint Joseph is um, the second. Uh, Biggest uh, cru in, Ron, in the North Rhone Valley in terms of size is a little bit more than 1,000 hectares. So as I was saying, it's um, so there is two yeah, there is both the two colors the red you represent uh, maybe 90 percent of the production. So with just one grape Syrah, and the white uh, represents so 10 percent. And you can use uh, two grape variety the Marsan and the Rosa. So uh, the Saint Joseph, it's uh, it's one of my favorite uh, appellation in the, in, the, in the north. It's um, it's very long appellation. The length is around uh, six, 60 kilometers of length, but it's very narrow, very very narrow. It's maybe two kilometers of of of, of wide. The main characteristic of uh, of Saint Joseph is that 95% of the vineyard is planted on the slopes. So when I say slopes, it means that it's very steep. You cannot use you cannot use the machine. Everything so all hand every, harvest. Yes. Everything I like to say it's a good place to work to keep you in a good shape. <laughs> 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 because because yeah, it's uh, you cannot use machine. It's very steep, and uh, 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 everything is done by hand. Spraying when you have to remove the grass or the uh, or the um, the herbs, you have to to use. Uh, you cannot use the machine. So everything is done by hand. So yes, it's quite. Uh, it's a hard job to work there. Yeah, definitely. Please. Uh, I was going to ask about the uh, the Marsan Rusan because it's a little bit unusual for other reasons, to include a white wine in a red wine dominant blend. Yeah. Yeah. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit on, on why white wines would be included with the, the Syrah? No, we, we, are not, um, uh, you are not, we are not using white, uh, uh, white grape, so Marsan and or Roussan for the, for the blend. So why, why is they, they permitted many years ago when they, they create the appellation, why is it permitted to, to blend some white grape is because it was a kind of natural chaptalization because the alcohol level for the white is all uh, uh, at the time 50 years ago the alcohol level was higher than the red and the red was more difficult to get the full ripeness so the white was very helpful to rise up a little bit the alcohol level so it was yes a kind of natural chaptalization. Okay, but now but then, now it's more for the like in, in like in, in Cotroti with uh, with some Bionier. It's more for the for the tradition to use a little bit of Bionier that just to um, to um, to get more ripeness in, uh, in in your in your wine. It's permitted in Saint Joseph, but your your Saint Joseph then would be one hundred percent Syrah. Yes, it's one hundred percent. It's almost permitted on each 
uh, red uh, on each uh, appellation in the north producing red. So you can do that in Hermitage, you can do that in Cross Hermitage, you can do that in Saint Joseph and Cotroti. The only one uh, is not permitted is for Cornas. I don't know why. It's very French. There is always an exception for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't of, know why. <laughs> of course, Cornas was probably uh, getting pretty ripe anyway with that probably, uh, climate yes. that they have. Probably because yeah. it was easier to get the, the ripeness more than, 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 than Cote Roti or Saint Joseph. Yes, yeah. probably. Okay. Well, maybe we can shift a little bit and go to the, uh, the Southern Rhone and elaborate a little bit more on that. I know you, you spoke a little bit about uh, Chateauneuf and, and the, the Galais, uh, but they were talking about the, uh, the stone pebbles that are in the, in the soil. <laughs> the, famous, the famous Galais Rollet. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. The, if you could maybe elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, so as I was saying, uh, in, the south, in, the, in, the, in the south part, uh, first of all, the king of the grape variety is Grenache. Because it was, except some ex, some uh, some exception with Syrah or Mourvet or Senso, oldest grape you can find in in the South Rhone Valley, it's it's vines from from Grenache. In Chateau du Pape, it's not it's not rare to find Grenache more than hundred years old. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a rarity. You have m- m- the average of of the Chateau Neuf vineyard. For the vines is around is between sixty to um, between fifty to sixty years old, so it's a quite old vineyard. So um, yeah, Grenache it's a Spanish grape variety, so it's very well very well adapted to the to the South Rhone Valley. Chateau du Pape is is the biggest uh, the biggest cru in uh, in uh, in uh, in Rhone Valley, so it's more than three thousand uh, hectare, and is the second biggest cru in France. Just, uh, just after Saint Emilio, I think. So that's why it's one of the most famous and uh, well-known cru uh, in, uh, in in the world. Thanks, th- thanks to Parker. Thanks to Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a big fan for sure. Yeah, he's a big fan. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And, and those vines uh, are actually in uh, bush vines as well, right? Oftentimes they grow in in a bush. There, is, there, there are some places on the sandy soil where you can find some bush vines. Uh, but sandy soil in Chateau du Pape represent maybe 20% of the, of the size. It's uh, the, 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 the most, the most important soil, kind of soil in Chateau du Pape. It's, uh, it's uh, the famous galet roulé. The galet roulé fr- come from the Rhone River many, 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 many years ago. Uh, million. Uh, years ago, so so you have a, there is some some vineyard. There is there are probably 30, 30 40 centimeters of uh, of of galet roulé. So when I say galet roulé, it's a big pebbles. It's like that. It's uh, it's it's quite it's quite huge. So this kind of soil pro- are producing uh, very um, rounded wines. So uh, yes, it's um, that's why. It's, that's why Chateau Neuf du Pape is so is so famous is because the kind of wine is very uh, is very uh, very charming. And those rocks they get they get warm throughout the day and then they continue to radiate the heat at night to ensure that the grapes get get ripe year in and year out. So there's oftentimes pretty consistent vintages uh, in Chateau Neuf du Pape certainly. Yes, yes. It's difficult to have a bad vintage in Chateau Neuf du Pape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the 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 last one was definitely 2002 very tricky vintage very heavy rain but after that yes you have a you have a just good vintage but after that you have yes you have um, you have not bad vintage and we'll be coming to the uh, the chateau neuf du pape one and tasting it in a little bit but where are your um, your vineyard sources from chateau neuf oh it's uh, it's uh, so it's in Chateau du Pape, uh, I don't know exactly the, the number, but we have you have probably fifty or sixty different name of microclima. So it's a blend. It's a blend of um, of uh, of uh, different microclima. Mostly, 
mostly on the gal on the galley roulé, hein? uh, mostly on galley roulé. So it's a blend of uh, lacro on on the top of lacro, so on on the galley roulé. It's a blend of uh, ligardiol, so it's more close to orange. Because Chateau du Pape, you have a five village producing Chateau du Pape. You have Orange, Chateau neuf du Pape, Sorgue, Bedarid, and Cortezo. So um, lacro is close to uh, uh, Courtaison and uh, and Bedarid village, and Legardiol is close to uh, to Orange uh, village, but it's uh, it's mostly mostly on 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 the Galley Roulé, uh, the the Chateau Neuf Okay, and, and, and then mostly then... and mostly from Grenache. And Grenache between 80 to 100 years old. And then, what about some of the other permitted varietals? I know you use a, a little bit of Mourvedre and Syrah as well. In yeah, your... it's just 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 a, a touch, just to you know to uh, to bring something more. You know, as Henri Bonneau uh, was saying, the, the pop of Chateau Neuf du Pape, the 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 the, 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 the father of Chateau Neuf du Pape was saying, Grenache is a soup. The rest is a salt and new pepper in your soup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that's a good so, way to think of it. Yeah. So Grenache is the most important. The, the re for me, for me and uh, for, um, for my father, the real, the real typicity of Chateau Neuf du Pape is Grenache from all vines. After it's just, it's just to, to bring a little bit, uh, a little bit more complexity, but yes, Grenache is the the, the archetype, the good Chateau Neuf du Pape. Yeah. What is the advantage of of using old vines? You've mentioned old vines a lot. Uh, how does that impact the wine having uh, fruit from the old vines? Uh, so two two advantages. It's the first is is a kind of warranty for the for for the quality because every year with old vines we are quite you are quite sure to get to get a, a good quality of wine. Because all vines is is less less sensitive to the effect to the climate to the um, to the effect vintage to the climate. So it means that when you have a we have when you have a very dry year because the the root system go so deep, so it can reach the water easily than 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 the young vines. So it's less sensitive to the to the drought, less less sensitive also to the rain because you have less less um, less leaves, less vegetation. You have less uh, grape also, so less sensitive to the to the disease. It's quite consistent in terms of quality every year. Of course, you have you have some uh, some difference every year, but it's quite consistent and. The second advantage is, as I was saying, the root system go very deep, easily five, six centimeters. Uh, so, and the, the system roots explore each level of the soil. So you have the best expression of the terroir when you, when you are using all vines. Excellent. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, my pleasure we have uh, just a couple questions before we get into the tasting uh, do you mm -hmm. use um, viognier in your cut roti no 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 it's 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 100 percent uh serine okay and then there was another question about uh, gigondas uh where do the um, fruit sources for you come from from that region that appellation so mostly mostly from les dentelles so Les Dentelles, this is the name of the range, just behind the village. And it's, um, I like a lot this part of the vineyard because for many reasons, for two reasons exactly. First is because it's on the elevation. So the vineyard is between 300 meters, 400 meters of elevation. So very interesting for the freshness and for the, for the, for the, the complexity of the, the flavor. Secondly, is because the terroir, the, the, the vines, the vineyard, is completely surrounded by the range and also by the, the local vegetation. We call that the garig. So it's, uh, it's full of thyme, if, uh, full of, um, of rosemary, of, um, uh, of um, uh, sage, uh, of uh, laurel. Uh, so, and, um, and you can feel it. You know, you can feel it in wine. 
uh, after the wine making. So, uh, and I like a lot this kind of flavor. So it's uh, it's um, it's a part of the vineyard of Gigondas. Uh, very interesting, and, and uh, we source uh, mostly from 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 this area. Okay, perfect. And yeah, you can certainly get a lot of the, the Garrigue and the uh, Chateauneuf as well. And and I agree. I I find that very enjoyable when that's present. Yeah, but it's you you, you have less. Um, it's less surrounded by 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 wood of uh, of forest, you know, than compared to the Gigondas. Gigondas is very wide, you know. Uh, the, the terroir in Les Dentelles is very far away from the village. You know, uh, you have to you have to drive. Easily 15, 20 uh, kilometers to reach to reach the the, vine- the first uh, the first vineyard. So it's a, it's in the, in the middle of, of nowhere. You know, it's okay. A, yeah, it's a na- na- nice place to work. Also, nice place to work because the, the the landscape and the scenery is beautiful. Those those who are interested in in the Greek, those who enjoy the Greek, would want to uh, try the Gigondas. Yeah, because it, it sounds like it's more intense in the Gigondas yeah. than the Chateauneuf. Yeah. Yes. Chateau de, in terms of, uh, I, I like, I like the flavor is because it's, uh, yes, yeah, very complex. Chateau de du Pape is more, more on the palette, you know, it's more the complexity on the palette and more the, the quality of the tannin, you know, in Chateau de du Pape. Chateau de du Pape is very silky, very soft. Uh, for me, a good, a good, a good definition of Chateau de du Pape is, is not a question of density of concentration. It's more a question of, of the quality of the tannin, you know, because it's always more elegant and more uh, fine than the other cru in, in, in the south. For me, yes. Chateau du Pape. It's, it's yeah. like that, that you can recognize a good Chateau du Pape. <laughs> yeah, and they can even be uh, enjoyed younger as well. Um, yes, also, also, and, and you can enjoy younger because the tannin are very well integrate, uh, integrate sorry, when it's young. Yeah, we're definitely with uh, Gigondas, you probably want to give it a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, Gigondas is a little bit more, uh, it's, um, it's a little bit more austere, you know, Gigondas, uh, yeah. in terms of, uh, of, of, of tannin. But uh, both, both Chateauneuf or Gigondas are, are definitely uh, wine uh, able for the aging, definitely. And yes. if you have, after it's just a question of patience. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah everyone should, should certainly uh taste for themselves and make their own judgments and the only good wine is the wine you like so it's important to taste them okay so you we start the testing yes yeah. why don't we start with the uh the white cote de rome yes the big fan yes Could you, <laughs> yeah we've been talking a lot about the red wines but certainly uh there's some outstanding white wines from from the rhone as well so the the big thing, so white and red. Uh, so just for the for the story, uh, le big thing, if I translate, uh, is it means fine nose. It's a typical French expression, who means uh, gourmet big thing. When you say you are a big thing, it means that you are a gourmet. So um, this cuvee for the white and, and the red, this is our entry level. So for this cuvee, we are not age them in in wood we are just age them in a concrete tank because for one reason is because we want to keep the purity of the fruit as possible we can because it's a casual you know it's a casual wine it's the wine that you want to share with your friends it's the wine that you want you want to drink uh, after a hard day of work you know it's a uh, it's a uh, it's um it's it's a very charming wine you know it's um it's the wine to to drink uh, uh, for every day you know it's uh it's a quite easy going you know it's uh it's not it's not very sophisticated but i want to say it's simply good <laughs> i agree <laughs> it is excellent and and certainly the price point is very very attractive as well in the united states it's um Nineteen dollars U.S., which is quite low for a, a quality white wine. Yeah, it's uh, so. Yes, we it's a uh, it's a blend of different grape variety. It's mostly Grenache, Pionnier, and after you have a little bit of Marsan, Roussan, and Claret. We source we source the grape or the juice on a different uh, place in in Rome Valley. So exactly three places. 
one uh, on uh, on uh, close to uh, to the Lirac terroir, so on the Gar the Gar terroir. So it's on just on the other side. You have Chateauneuf du Pape, Avignon, the Rhone River, and you have Le Gard and Lirac, and the grape come from this place. So it's uh, it's on the Galerie Roulé also. Uh, so after we source uh, the wine uh, on on Keran. Uh, terroir, uh, cru, uh, and after we source also the wine on uh, on the north face of the Levantou. So Levantou, uh, it's the 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 highest uh, mountain in uh, in Vaucluse. Uh, it's uh, almost close to two thousand uh, meters of elevation. So and the north face is very interesting. Uh, this place is very interesting because uh, the, the wine are very fresh. You know, it's um, it's not full bodied, but it's very fresh. So we have the we 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 have the full bodied from the gar, and we have the freshness from the from from uh, from uh, from the Ventoux. And after you have the, the fruit from the gar from uh, Keran, and we blend them, and we you have the result in your glass. Yes, very very nice. And for those who haven't tried white Rhone yet, I highly recommend it. There's uh, only a small percentage of white wines made, but they can be quite outstanding, and it's definitely something worth trying. Yeah, it's you know the the the, the white the white Rhone at South eh, right, is very is becoming very very more popular, you know, because it's quite easy to understand the wine. You know, it's very charming, it's very fruity, it's full of fruit. Um, yeah, it's full of uh, flavor, you know, and um, and uh, for 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 someone who have no idea about the Rhone Valley or white white Rhone Valley, it's uh, it's I think it's quite easy to understand, and that's why that's why the white are more and more popular in in Rhone Valley and with a um, new uh, wine drinker. No, I, I seriously, I'd, a lot of the Rhone wines in the United States because we have the three tier system, the the prices can get quite high over here okay. because they get marked up a couple times uh, mm. but what would the price point be for those in in the eu uh what would the price point be on this wine for this one it's uh it's um 10 10 11 euro 11 euro okay so yeah. also an excellent value there and then yes uh, yeah, 11, yeah here. 10 10 10 11 it depends uh, uh it depends of uh of, of the country but uh, yes it's uh it's around around 10 Around ten, so yes, it's a. I think it's yes for ten for ten euros. It's a good. It's definitely it's a good value. I think. Well, good. Well, should we talk a little bit about the uh, the red? Yes, for the for, red for, 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 the, for the red is quite it's quite uh, it's quite the same approach than 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 the white. You know, there is no 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 aging in in oak only in concrete during twelve months. Uh, but uh, the particularity of the the Becfin, uh, red is that we are not using sulfite during the winemaking. So it's a free sulfite during winemaking and during the aging. We add just a little bit of sulfite before the bottling, just to be sure that when 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 we ship the wines is not uh, there is not a bubble inside uh, during the <laughs> right <laughs> during no secondary the, fermentation the travel, you know <laughs> yeah yeah no so, secondary uh, fermentation yeah we 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 don't want uh, we don't want to produce uh, natural wines but why we are not using uh, sulfite is just sand and the white is just just to keep the purity of the fruit you know just the the, and to keep a um, very explosive fruit on an, on a, on 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 the nose, you know, and to keep the the charming side of uh, of of the 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 the, the, the Ron Valley uh, wines, you know, the red Ron Valley. Uh, it's full of fruit. Uh, it's very very charming. Uh, it's um, yeah, it's um, it's quite quite easy going for 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 red. You know, the tannin are not um, are very well integrated. It's uh, it's quite tannin, you know. It's not. Uh, it's not. Um, it's not on the, on, the, on, the, on on your palate. It's uh, yes. It's uh, it's uh, it's an easy one, definitely. And so these are both the uh, the Cote de Rhone's, but it's the white and the red, and it's the Le Becfin. The name of these, they're they're both the Cote de Rhone's. Yes, one yes, is white, is one is red. Yeah, 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 yeah the Becfin. Yeah. So it's yes. a blend of uh, <clears throat> Grenache and, and Syrah. So sixty Grenache and, and forty Syrah. 
and okay. it's only from from one terroir. So it's a terroir of uh, Le Plateau des Césargues, and it's on the other side of the Rhone River. So it's uh, it's on the Gare side, but it's on the Galet Roulet also. The same Galet Roulet that you can find in Chateau neuf du Okay, and so it's all from the Southern Rhone. Yes, and that's, yes. That is a pretty high percentage of Syrah then for, uh, for Southern Rhone. Yes, because, you know, pr producer plant, uh, plant Syrah many years ago because you get you, you you get you get you get more color than Grenache. Syrah Syrah when it's young, it's very it's full of fruit. It's very ch you know it's very charming. You know it's uh, fl the flavor are very um, are very exuberant. You know, so that's why producer uh, plant uh, more um, more and more Syrah in a, in the south. Uh, but to be honest, I'm I'm a Grenache man. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm a Grenache man, definitely. Uh, you know, Grenache, when it's well made, Grenache is a Pinot Noir from the south. <laughs> it can be, yeah, for sure. Very elegant, <laughs> yes. very elegant. Especially, especially when it's producing on the same soil, definitely. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So, yes, uh, and I, I, yeah, the, the, I, 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 I like the... I like the I like the palette of uh, of, of Chardonnay du Pape of um, Grenache. You know, it's um, it's you have a kind of sucrosity. It's very well rounded. It's uh, the tannins are very soft. It's uh, yes, I, I I I like definitely uh, gr more Grenache than Syrah. For the okay. south, eh? for the south. Yes, from the south. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, um, the south. we'll we'll save the. Uh... The old vine Chateauneuf for last, then, since it's your your favorite from the south. But for now, we will shift gears and go to the uh, 2017 Saint Joseph, yep. and this is uh, the old vine bottling. Yes, old vine Saint Joseph. So now we jump in the in the north uh, in the north part of the Rhone Valley. So as you were saying, between south and north, you have a gap of uh, 100 miles uh, at least. So not not the same climate. Of course, not the same grape. Saint Joseph is one of my favorite uh, wines. It, for me, it's one of the flagship of Tardieu Laurent because this cuvee definitely represents the most we like in the wines. For me, because we source we source the grape on on the iconic on the iconic terroir of uh, of uh, of Saint Joseph. There is a part of the blend the vines are more than 120 years old. Oh wow! Planted, planted on uh, on terroir of Saint Epine, so beautiful, beautiful terroir of Saint Joseph, on uh, on a hard granite. Um, so and you can feel it, you know, in your mouth. You have the sharpness, the sharpness of the granite. You have the 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 freshness, the acidity of the granite, and you can you can feel almost, you know, the sharpness of the stone, you know, of the granite in in, in your mouth. It's very mineral. It's uh, you have a lot of violet, you know, in, in, inside. It's uh, it's very complex, you know. Um, it's it's more like a a, a petit cotroti. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's a good comparison because uh, <laughs> certainly there are some uh, some wines from Saint Joseph that, that come from the the part closer to the river that aren't aren't as high quality. But the hard or the further up you go on the slopes, you can get some really high quality, outstanding yeah, yeah, Saint yeah. Joseph. Yeah, is a, so the, the 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 part on the 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 part of the vineyard on the flat part re represent just a few few percent because mostly m the, the most of the vineyard of Saint Joseph is planted on a, on a, on a, on the slope on the slopes. That that's why that's why you have a for me in Saint Joseph you have very high quality in general very high quality of 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 wines in general. And uh, you have very, very uh, iconic terroir like Saint Epine, but after it's a blend also uh, of uh, of more in the south of uh, the terroir, uh, Le Paradis, Les Oliviers, so beautiful terroir on 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 on, on the mauve village. Uh, after you have uh, you have some vines on uh, on Le Dit of Saint Joseph, only iconic terroir of Saint Joseph. So um, for me, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a great. Great, great, great cuvée for me. And this is, uh, as you mentioned, 100% Syrah. It's 100% Syrah, yeah. 
So blend. So uh, it's uh, there is um, uh, for 2017, it's uh, 20 percent of New York for the first year, and after it's a barrel from one and two years, and for the second year it's uh, blended and aged in uh, in food uh, in food in a wooden tank for the second year. Yeah, for me the nice thing about Saint Joseph also is it's more approachable early on compared to Cote Roti and Hermitage and, and Cornas. And so those I always enjoy with a lot more age on them, but you need to drink something while you wait. And Saint Joseph is a great choice uh, if you enjoy Northern Rhone yeah. and Syrah. Yeah, yeah, yes. It's definitely more, much more approachable than, uh, than Syrah, than Syrah, than Cote Roti or, 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 or Hermitage. And, uh, and, and what, what, what I like in, especially in, uh, in the North Rhone Valley is because the Syrah produced on this area are very unique because I, I got the opportunity to work in Barossa Valley, to work in Spain, to work in New Zealand. Uh, I work with Syrah in, in each country, but Syrah from the North Rhone Valley is very unique. It's the perfect for me, is the perfect combination between the grape, the, the, the granite soil, the soil, and, and, uh, and, and, and the climate. It's a perfect combination. That's why, that's why Syrah from that place are very unique. I agree. And especially with age, you get some really, really intriguing aromatics on it yeah. as well. So Yeah, it's very, it's, you have a lot of violet, you know. You have a lot of licorice, violet. For me, you know, when you have this kind of flavor, you can make the connection. It's a Syrah from the north, <laughs> Rhone Valley. Absolutely. It's easy to recognize. When you, when you have, for me, it's, uh, that's why I like this cuvee because it's very, it's very typical. You have the real typicity of the North Rhone Valley wines. Well, well said. Well, we don't want to run out of time without talking about the, uh, the Chateauneuf old vines. So why don't we move ahead and, and talk about this one? I understand this, uh, Sapage is eighty uh, percent Grenache, yeah. and then ten Grenache, a little bit of Mourvedre and Syrah. Uh, but yes, it's mo mostly Grenache. So mostly Grenache. The Grenache are between eighty and hundred years old. The Mourvedre are very old also, which is not very common for Ch for Chateau du Pape. Eh? And the Mourvedre are more than eighty years old. So it's uh, the Mourvedre are on um, on the terroir of Morodon, le plateau de Morodon. So beautiful terroir, uh, very interesting for 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 the for the for the Mourvedre. Uh, you have a lot of uh, you have pebbles, but a lot of clay. So um, the the vines are not uh, suffering with uh, with water because they have enough water uh, for the for the Mourvedre. For the Grenache, it's a it's a blend of different also different uh, microclimat in in Chateau du Pape. So you have a little bit of Les Gardioles, which is more on the Galet Roulé. Uh, you have a little bit of uh, Lacro, uh, which is also Galé Roulé. Uh, uh, you have a um, uh, terroir of uh, Fond de Michel also. Uh, so it's mostly Galé Roulé. So mostly Galé Roulé. And you can, you can feel it, you know, in a wine because it's, wow, it's very opulent. You know, it's... It is, uh, yeah, for it's, sure. <laughs> the palette is full of wine, you know. You have a, a nice sucrosity, uh of the, the, the Grenache produce, produce on the Galet Roulet, but there is no residual sugar inside, but it's a, a natural uh, sucrosity, you know, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in wines. Uh, it's, for me, the good archetype of the Chateau Neuf du Pape. It's what you can expect of, of, of Chateau Neuf du Pape. The tannins are very well integrated. They are very soft. Uh, you cannot feel it. Uh, and, 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 uh, and it's uh, it's able for the aging. So this is the this is the magic in in, in Chateau du Pape. I agree. Even though it's a 2017, I opened it maybe an hour before we started here, and it's already very approachable. Yeah, yeah yes, uh, because it's it's the it's the mark of the vintage to, uh, seven, uh, seventeen. For me, I like a lot of vintage because the wine are quite approachable young. Compared to 16, for, for example, 16 is for the long, long, long keeping. 17, uh, I like because it's very, it's full of fruit and quite approachable right now. Able for the aging, but approachable right now. Is there another vintage recently that you would compare 17 to? Would it be more like, uh, say, 2011? Save 
11, I would say 2006, for example. Six, okay. Six, uh, maybe, uh, well, six, six is quite similar to six, yes, because it's very fruity and, um, and the, yes, uh, and the tannin are already well integrated. And, uh, and 2016 uh, was, uh, was a little bit like that. And even though Merved was only a small percent, it seems like the Merved really comes through on the, on the palate here. I, I'm definitely, um, it, yeah, at least it seemed, a, I would have guessed it was higher. Yeah, because you have a little bit of tobacco, you know, in the wines, uh, tobacco leaves. And uh, yeah, we think that Grenache must be, must, must represent uh, at least 70, 80%. Because if after you are using too much Merved or Syrah, they are covering the, the Grenache, you know, in your blends. And after you are losing uh, what we like in a Grenache, you know, <laughs> the finesse, right. the elegance. And uh, so interesting to bring the tannin structure with the Mourvedre, but not too much. Otherwise, you are covering the wine. And, right. the, typicity yeah. of, and the typicity of Chateau du Pape, for me. Yes, no, I agree. I thought it was... Uh Certainly the right amount, but it was uh, it was noticeable, but not it didn't overpower the Grenache by any means. I just happened to notice that it was there, and uh, I would have guessed that it might have been a little higher just because I got more of the Merved than the Syrah in, in that one. Yeah, anyway, it's just yes, it's a, that's why the blend is very uh, it's a part of interesting and very important in our job because you know you have to find the good the good balance between all of them or the terroir and all the grape. It's interesting, very interesting. Yeah, and how many people are on your team? How many peop you, people help you taste the wines and determine the blends? Uh, just my father, just my father and I. Just the two of you? Yeah. Okay. My father and I. So yeah, yeah. It's just, so you're doing uh, lots of tasting. Yes. It's, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. We decide uh, together. Uh, sometimes we are not agree. So when we are not agree, we, we are leaving the blend on the side and we come back two or three days after and to find uh, the good the, the, the good balance. The good blend. To try it again and but see most if we of get the, the times, same result. most of the times we are agree. <laughs> yeah. No, we certainly have uh, plenty of people who'd like to volunteer to help with that job. If you need an uh, intern. Let me know, and we probably have lots of people to help. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If, if, <laughs> I, I'm meeting you if one day. Uh, usually, we are do, doing that just, uh, just, just before the harvest, or just uh, some. It depends of the the cuvee. Say just before or just after the harvest. So you know, you know the timing now. So yes. Please, you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks very much. And, <laughs> yeah, let me see if I have a question here. Yeah, so maybe you could tell us a little bit about the the next vintage and what to look forward to. Yeah, so the uh, we've talked a lot about the the 2017 vintage. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the, about the 2018 vintage in both the north and the south. Okay, so 2000, uh, 2018 was um, was a, a quite tricky vintage in the south uh, part because uh, during the the spring. Springtime, we got um, regularly uh, rain, so it was um, quite difficult for the for the producer to manage that because the the, the pressure of the disease was quite uh, quite heavy, quite important, and the only timing for the spring was during the the weekends. So it was uh, yes, it was quite, uh, quite 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 tricky to to manage, and some producer lost. Um, more more than uh, half part of the crop. Oh wow! Yes, due due to the to the disease during the during during the springtime, uh, and especially the Grenache because the Grenache is more sensitive than than Syrah to the mildew or both uh, and uh, or oidium. So uh, difficult to 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 manage in that time. And after the, the summer was very uh, very dry and very uh, and quite warm. So, which is very helpful because the pressure got down. Fortunately, fortunately, because yes, it was uh, uh, just a two fingers to be uh, to be a bad uh, bad vintage. But okay, fortunately, so uh, fortunately, the weather was beautiful during the summer and during the the back season uh, and during the harvest. 
So uh, he saved he saved the vintage, the 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 warm and the sun saved the vintage definitely, uh, definitely. So in the Southern Rhone, twenty eighteen will be a, a good vintage, but there won't be much wine. The volumes will be lower. Yes, yeah, yeah. Which is not this, which is not the case in in the north. Uh, it's not they got some rain, but not like in the south. And uh, the crop was uh, was quite quite significant. So it's a good quality and good quantity in the north part. Okay. So yeah. quality is good in both, but the volumes will be smaller in the south. Yes. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. This was a, a fantastic session, and I'm sure we could go on like this for another hour or two, but I don't want to take too much of your time, but I certainly <laughs> appreciate you, you joining me. <laughs> Thank you very much for the for inviting me and uh, and yes you are welcome you are welcome for for testing and for the blend. <laughs> it's my pleasure. So I hope to take you up on that because uh, it's definitely one of my favorite regions in the world, both the north and the south. I'm a big huge fan of the Rhone and I drink the wines all the time and enjoy them very much. So. It was my pleasure and an honor to uh, speak with you today. So thank you thank very you. much. Same, same Merci beaucoup. Me. Merci and uh, have, a, have a good afternoon. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Thank you. Bye-bye.